Hi there. So, um, starting with the disclaimer, all the equipment that is in this video is actually my own, um, either bought with my own money or acquired through projects that I have worked on. Um, so there is no interest by any of the vendors uh, or influence in that sense. Uh, the opinion in this video is mine. Um, and um, yeah, that out of the way. Um, I'm talking about IL streaming today and what IL streaming is. You might have come to this video and you already know about IL streaming or you might be absolutely clueless to what it is. Basically IL streaming is like a, a vlog, a video log, um, uh, just in a live format. So um, you could be out, you could be at an event, you could be out uh, in, in, uh, on a daily task somewhere in the city, um, things like that, whatever you sort of fancy. The big difference between a vlog and IL streaming obviously is that you can interact with your audience and your audience can interact with you and that makes it a whole lot more interesting. So the basic minimum to start an IL stream is actually just mobile phone. You have your camera, you have your microphone, and you have your screen where you can interact with your chat. Um, that's quite a few people that basically uh, use uh, or do their, their IL stream like that. There's a couple of pieces of software that you can download that are free. Um, I will be linking, for example, Larix Broadcaster is one that's really, really good. There is um, a couple of pieces of software that tie in with your chat and your, your notifications. Unfortunately, uh, only for Android, there is not really anything for iOS, uh, for, for the Apple iPhone. Um, you have the native applications of Twitch, Facebook, and YouTube, but that's about it on, on that end. The problem you run into with a phone IL stream or with any IL stream really is that the longer you're streaming, the more likely you are to run out of battery because obviously recording and data and all of that um, will run your battery down quite quickly. So the first thing that you sort of would invest into uh, for an IL stream is a good battery bank. Um, generally, I would say minimum 20 amp hours. Um, there's plenty of batteries out there, so I won't even go into that. Um, the next thing then is as, as you progress, you might uh, have the camera further up uh, on, on a selfie stick and you, uh, or you, your phone and you might want to opt to have a second phone for the chat um, so that you you can see what's going on um, without having it all on the same on the same phone and as people then progress from there um, you might want to use an action camera so very popular is the sony action cameras they are unfortunately discontinued now um, the discontinued uh, january 2021 i believe Another popular choice is the GoPro Hero. The newest GoPro uh, at the moment is the Hero 10. This is a Hero 9. Now the thing with, with, the, with the GoPro Hero um, is that you, you can stream from the, the camera. There's no problems with that. Um, it's just shown that it's not the most reliable way of doing things. The internal streaming, the bitrate can go quite low. Um, it connects via Wi-Fi to whatever internet device you have and um, so results have been hit and miss. So what people usually do is they use the HDMI port and I think the Sony, I'm not so sure if it can stream at all, um, but it has a HDMI port. So for the newer generations of, of GoPro Hero cameras you need the media mod to get a HDMI port and you then connect your camera to an encoder and the most popular encoder in the past has been the live view solo which is what we have here that's the live view solo um, 
The problem with that is that's quite a pricey device. So we're talking about thousand to fifteen hundred dollars for the unit. What you get for that is you get an enclosed unit with a battery in it. The battery lasts about two hours. Um, you get you get um, an internal Wi-Fi module. You get the network port here on the side, um, which is there. Yeah, um, and then you can add two 4G USB modems. There's four connections you can run off that. Um, if you only have one modem, then that's it. That, that's you. That's you sorted. If you want to use more than one modem because you maybe have different carriers and you have like black spots where you don't have signal, things like that, you need a subscription from LiveView that's called LRT. And LRT is a bonding service. So it will basically take uh, all the modems that you've connected to your LiveView solo um, and it will load balance your data across all the modems and then they basically take that apart again on the other end and they send it on to whatever service you're streaming to. That costs $45 per month or $450 per year if you pay yearly in advance. And that's where it basically becomes costly because you have you have the purchase of the unit, you have the monthly fee for the LRT service and then you have additionally the cost of your mobile connections. So obviously um, alternatives have been looked at and over the last two years quite a few alternatives have popped up. Voila! So what we have here is a whole bunch of solutions that can be used for IL streaming. So let me start with this Raspberry Pi 4 here. Um, that's a uh, a board running a software called Cosmo Streamer. That's a product specifically designed for DJI uh, products. So the DJI Pocket 2, for example. And what it does, it takes the, uh, the feed um, for the mobile phone on the camera and it grabs that and it then basically takes it into the Raspberry Pi, encodes it there and streams that way. And that cuts down on uh, overheating on specifically the DJI Pocket 2. So that's the solution for that one. I have a separate video for that, which I've linked below, um, that describes how that setup works. The next one here is actually two encoders. These are industrial encoders. They, they've been around for a good bit, but they weren't necessarily on IL streamers radar as a cost effective, effective solution. So um, this is the Endeco Mini and this is the TBS 2603 SE. Um, price point on those is around $250 to maybe $300 depending on where you get them, which is a third, less than a third of what Life Your Solo costs. So that's pretty good. And what they do is they take a HDMI feed, they encode it, and then you add a modem like the Netgear Nighthawk via an Ethernet port. Now they are single modem solution. So you only can have one modem, that's it. The nice thing about them is that they support HEVC of H265, which is a different codec traditionally all streaming platforms at the moment are using RTMP and H.264. H.265 cannot be implemented with RTMP because it was never part of the standard of the protocol. Um, it, there's, a, there's a couple of codecs defined in, in RTMP, but H.265 is not one of them. So these two um, have SRT. These two encoders can do RTMP, they can do H.264, but they can also do H.265 using SRT. And OBS, the Open Broadcaster Studio, that most people are using for their, for their streaming from home, and that uh, many IRL streamers also use as intermediate, uh, understands SRT and understands H.265. The advantage of H.265 is that it uses half the bandwidth of what H.264 does. So you now save on your data 
on your mobile connections. And that is important when you don't have an unlimited mo uh, mobile connection. So that's great. We then have the big brother of um, the TBS uh, of, of TBS 2603SE, which is called the TBS 2603AU. Uh, doesn't seem that much difference, but it is, it is. So what this has on top of what the two others have is it can take two cameras, one via HDMI and one via USB. And that USB camera could obviously also be a USB capture dongle um, if you want so, won't want to do that. It can then either send the two cameras separate from each other back home, or it could send one camera back home and one uh, feed with a picture-in-picture -picture, uh, feed. As uh, depending on how you set it up, it will only manage to encode two streams. So that one is about hundred dollars more than the two other ones. So we're talking four hundred dollar range for that. Um, the other thing it also has um, the. And Deco Mini and the TBS 2603AU have an audio in port. So you can actually add your audio at the encoder instead of into the camera. You can't do that with the TBS 2603SE. So that's quite handy. And then if you want to take it to the next level, um, two cameras is not enough. There's an Atom Mini. Um, that would not necessarily normally be something that you carry around in your backpack. And one thing has to be noted, the Atom Mini cannot encode on its own. The Atom Mini Pro, um, so this is around $300, and then the Pro version is about twice the price, between five and $600. The Atom Mini Pro has its own encoder built in, and you can encode RTMP H.264. You still would need a modem connected to it, and it would be a single modem solution. Uh, the Atom Mini, you will need another uh, encoder for it. Um, that could be the Live View Solo, or it could be one of these hardware encoders. So that's about $300. And that allows you to add four cameras, one picture in picture, um, and some transitions, and it gets fairly advanced. Now I've seen some, for example, trucking streams, um, people that, that film while they are driving their truck all over Europe um, or the US that has exactly this setup. So they have an ATEM Mini, they have a Live View Solo, and they have uh, four cameras mounted in the, in the truck and they can switch around with them, which is nice with these big tactile buttons. But the fun part about the ATEM Mini is that you can actually um, also remote control it from it has an API and there's like different tools that tie in with that and then you could basically put it in your backpack and you could have a HDMI switcher. The biggest problem now is that you obviously want to prevent the buttons from being pressed while it is in your backpack. So there's a company called DeckSaver and they made this cover and that solves that. So now you have a workable solution for your backpack. You might say, why don't you just take a cheap HDMI matrix instead? And you can do that. But the problem with the HDMI matrix is that they are often, first of all, not the most reliable um, they, they intended for home use or, or studio use, but not for, for out and about. The other thing that happens when you switch on a HDMI switcher, a HDMI matrix, when you switch from one camera to another, it often resets the HDMI uh, output to, to, the, to the screen. For a monitor or TV, that doesn't matter too much, but the encoders don't like that at all. And the ATEM Mini doesn't do that. It doesn't disrupt the HDMI signal going out to the encoder. So that's why this is the better choice. So the next thing then is... Um, this tablet looking thing. This is the second iteration of this is the YOLO Live YOLO box. Um, the second iteration of it is the Pro version. The original YOLO box was under motorized. Um, the interface was quite uh, laggy. Um, this device runs Android and um, so I never considered the original YOLO box. But 
in last summer they brought out the Yolo Box Pro and they added an additional HDMI port and they added an additional micro microphone port. So you now have three HDMI ports. You have a USB port for a USB camera, but that only supports uh, 720p on that at the moment. The HDMI ports are HD, so they are 1080p. It has HDMI out to another monitor. It has a Type-C USB port that allows uh, for a display port cable. So you can connect a monitor with a display port to it. Headset, two microphones. Um, it has a network connector. Um, it has built-in Wi-Fi. And it has an internal 4G modem. So you have three different ways of getting your connectivity. But you can only use one at any given time. Now, there's a hack for this. Because this is Android, where you escape the Yolo Box software and you manage to install a launcher on this. And then uh, you can install a um, application from um, a, uh, a bonding service called Speedify. Um, they have an, an Android application. You can install that here. And suddenly you have three network connections that are bonded. Another project out there is the uh, Bela Box. It's an open source project that's based on the uh, NVIDIA Jetson Nano. And um, it uses, there's two versions of the, of the Jetson Nano. There's a 2 gigabyte version and a 4 gigabyte version. Generally, it's recommended that you use the 2 gigabyte version because it's easier to power. It doesn't make any difference to which of the two boards you have. The reason why they use the Jetson Nano and not a Raspberry Pi 4 is because the Raspberry Pi 4 doesn't have enough power to, to actually encode uh, H.265. The Jetson Nano is capable uh, or has the processing power to be able to encode a 4K30 stream if it had to do it. All we need is HD at 60 FPS the most. So it's a perfect application for that. The Jetson Nano doesn't have a HDMI capture integrated. So what we tend to use is the Elgato CamLink 4K. Uh, so you add that and then you add your USB modems like these ones. And um, uh, yeah, that's, that's you up and running. You obviously need a bonding service on the other end to take the bonding apart again. There's a couple of solutions there. You can either install it in your own VPS or virtual machine on the internet or your PC at home. Um, that's one way to do it. The other way to do it is that if you sponsor the project on GitHub for $10 a month, you get access to the bonding servers that the project has. So that's another option. So that would be $10 a month for Baylor Box. It's $45 a month for the LRT service, which is a big difference. And the other nice thing with this is also, again, it uses SRT LA. So the the load balanced version of SRT. And on top of that, it uses H265. Again, you're saving a lot of bandwidth um, on your data plan by using this. And then the newest thing that came around um, was uh, this encoder here. So that's the KiloView P2. And the KiloView P2 compares to a Live View Solo Plus. So the normal Live View Solo for around thousand dollars is um, you have your Wi-Fi, you have your Ethernet, and you have your two modems that you can attach to foot. On the Live View Solo Plus, which is more like fifteen hundred dollars, you have two internal four G modems. You can have two USB modems on it. You have a network card and your Wi-Fi. So the KiloView P2, there's a version, there's a P1 version which has SDI and there's a P2 version that has, has HDMI. Otherwise they are identical. So the KiloView P2 has two internal 4G modems. Um, it has two USB ports, 
where you can connect either an Ethernet to USB dongle or you can connect two USB 4G modems. Um, and then additionally, it has internal 2.4 gigahertz and 5 gigahertz uh, Wi-Fi built in. Now, the beauty of this is that this unit only costs around $800. Um, additionally, for the bonding service, all they give you is a Docker image that you install into, into your own virtual machine or VPS or at home. Um, and there is no fee for, for the bonding. So uh, that's a much, uh, much more attractive package. The internal battery is good for four hours. In the Life View Solo, the internal battery is good for two hours. And this also only needs um, 12 volt, one amp for charging, where the Life View Solo requires 12 volt, three amp. So it's much bigger requirement for, for power for, for the Life View Solo. Also, this only does H.264. There is talks about that there will be a version on upgrade that it will do H.265. But the nice thing is that this supports RTMP, SLT, a whole range of protocols that the Life View Solo doesn't. Um, and that's why this is actually a good contender if you just want a plug and play solution that is the same as the Life View Solo without the cost of the Life View Solo. Okay, so ne next problem then is we have all these solutions that only have one network connection and often you would want to have more than one because you might have issues with black spots where you have no connectivity on one network but you have on another. You want um, you would want to load balance your, your uh, uh, data usage over multiple uh, subscriptions because of the limits that you have on the subscriptions. So where, where I already said um, this can be modified with Speedify service to get three network connections on this. Speedify also have another solution, which is basically you, you take a Raspberry Pi 4 and you install uh, Raspbian or, or, or something the likes on that. And then you install a piece of software from them. And basically this here, this a Raspberry Pi 4 board becomes your bonder. So I connect all my modems to that and I take the network connection and plug it into the Indeco or the TBS or a Atom Mini Pro. Um, and that takes care of the load balancing then. The other solution is when I started out with the TBS um, and started experimenting with that, I actually built my own bonding solution using a Microtik router board Hex S, which is this and another Microtik router board instance at home to take the bonding apart again. So as part of the video series, I will basically be going through each of these solutions, how they work, how they put together, how, what you need to get um, your stream set up together. And um, uh, also describing on how you get bonding added to it. Um, so uh, hopefully that's, uh, if that has your interest, uh, subscribe down below and um, give me a like if you like it. Give me a dislike if you didn't like the video. Leave comments if you have questions and um, we'll see you in the next video. Thank you very much. Bye.